We're going to do the next segment a little bit differently. I'm going to be using this little mouse, little optical mouse, and behind the camera is going to be the digital book. So we're going to be using the Bishop Knight Mate out of Karsten Mueller's book. It's called uh, Fundamental Chess Endings. And I'll just read from the book and we'll follow along. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Hold on a minute. Okay, from his book, Karsten Mueller's book, Fundamental Chess Endings, it says, King, Bishop, and Knight versus King. This ending is quite tricky, especially as the 50-move rule can easily come to the defender's aid if the attacker makes a few slips. King, Bishop, and Knight share the work in the following manner. The attacking King generally stays in opposition C 2.7A and C stays in opposition to or a knight's move away from the defending king. It normally stays on squares of opposite color to the bishop. Okay, it says the knight stands near the king's because of its nature is a short range piece. Short range piece. And it, the knight stands near the king's because of its nature as a short range piece and covers light squares of the color the bishop can't control. The bishop is very fast and can easily create zugzwang situations. Mate can only be forced in a corner which is controlled by the bishop. We call these corners the right corner. The winning procedure consists of the following steps. The winning procedure consists of the following steps. Forcing the king to the edge of the board. Number one. Number two. The defending king may have to be forced from the wrong to the right corner. Number three. Mating the king in the right corner. The win is most often spoiled by wrong knight moves. It is essential to know the following pattern by heart, and I'll show you the pattern, according to Karsten Mueller. All right, this is the winning pattern. First, set up your board like this. Your winning pattern is a W. To here, and then to here, here, and then to here. Can you see how that makes a W? That's the winning pattern. And we'll take a look at the next part. Okay, the next part. We're at the beginning of phase two. Black's king can't retreat to the h8 corner because that knight. Okay, we may assume that white is to move. Otherwise, if you go like this, here and here, controlled by white pieces, reaches the position with white to move. First move, right there. Forcing black's king out of the wrong corner. And then according to Karsten Mueller in Fundamental Chess Endings, he says, black threatened to escape via D7 and furthermore, White's knight has to go to d7 next in order to control f8. 
or he's going to keep heading back to the wrong corner. Okay, king to d8. The real test of White's maneuver. The king manages to leave the edge for a short moment, but it is forced back again. You should know this by heart. If he goes this way, if he doesn't try to escape, right there, fifth move, and now King to c8, knight to c5, king to d8, and it says that if he goes here, and here, and here, it says white has a decisive advantage. It's a plus on the left and a minus on the right. So I'll put this back to here. Goes to here. Cut off square right there. Cuts him off. Karsten Mueller, for those that don't know, he does a column or did a column on chesscafe.com and he also does a series of videos on chess base and he does a chess base column. He's an in-game theoretician. He's a world-renowned in-game expert. Try to see where we're at. I think I need to enlarge that uh, font on that computer so it'd be quicker. We can read quicker. Or I can read quicker. And now it says transposes to line B. There is a different move that uh, Karsten has in the book. Instead of going to D8, if he goes to B8, I think you guys can see what's coming. Bring this back. This is line B. Okay, we pick up where we left off. This is line B. After king to e8, there's a bishop check. Knight's got that. Has to go back. Now comes a waiting move. Black's king has been driven two files further in the direction of the dangerous corner. 
White now just repeats the pattern. This is how you repeat the pattern. That W maneuver, this is how you do it. He's going to keep dancing back and forth, and if you use your knight and your bishop together, you're going to block off the squares and make him eventually go to the right corner. There's your checkmate. So we're going to go ahead and rack them back up, set up the original position, go back from the after the, I believe it was the first two moves. We'll pick up on move three. Okay, we'll go ahead and pick up on the third move of the main line. And then he says here, if he goes here, he lasts one move longer. Knight's got that, bishop's got that, so he's not going to really go anywhere. Another waiting move. Just a different way. We saw in some earlier segments on the video how they would be here and they would typically come up here and use it as a cutoff. They're just going to go this way now because it cuts off that square. Instead of being here, like this, where you can still go here, well, black can still go there, it's a little better to use it this way, to use the bishop, because now you've got knight here, and you've got bishop here and bishop here. So what happens is he can only go here or here. That's it for right now. <coughs> So he runs back. And then Knight's got that, and he has to go back, just like so. So we'll pick this up from here. Goes to here. And 
And Karsten says, imprisoning Black's king again. Knight, knight, bishop, and bishop here, king here. See, if you take a look, okay, whoa, time out. Take a look here for a second. King here, knight here, bishop here, knight here, bishop here, so, and king here. So actually, he's kind of stuck in this little area. He can never, never, ever get out. Because if he gets over to here, the knight's got... Okay, this move, bishop to d3, imprisoning black's king again. Black goes to c7. White goes to e4. Notice the diagonal. The knight here, bishop here, king here. He's boxed in. He's not going to go anywhere. Runs back. Try to drive him over towards that corner. And this is how Karsten Mueller says to do it. We've reached the shifted starting position again. This waiting move puts black in Zugzwang. We're still on phase. We're still on phase two, but this is going to be a wrap up on it. Finally, Black's king is confined in the right corner, and the third phase begins. We could choose between two ways to make Black's king. You can go here, knight to c5. like that. Or you can go this way. I think this rook was here. Or you can go this way. like that. Either one. Now we're going to go on to the other part, phase one. Here's some notes from Fundamental Chess Endings by Karsten Mueller. Especially important was the knight maneuver this knight maneuver on F7 to E5, D7, 
C5 and B7. This here W, it looks like a W and serve the purpose of controlling the flight squares H8 F8 H8 F8 D8 B6 and C5 so those are the flight squares that one that one that one that one and that one. This method should be practiced several times also at other edges and with bishops of the other color to be able to master it over the board. Now we proceed to phase one. In the diagram this is the setup in the diagram in Karsten Mueller's book. Got all the white pieces in the corner. King right out in the center of the board. Diagram white's pieces occupy very passive positions and must first be brought into play. That right there takes away one of the flight squares with a discovered check. Some people say it picks up a tempo. Okay. Instead of F6, if black went the wrong way to D6, And on this note, 
Karsten Mueller says Black didn't manage to get into the wrong corner, so the mate is near. He goes here, he just goes like that. That's the only place he can go and go like that. Go like that. Checkmate. Instead, goes like this. and gets it the other way. We'll back up to variation B on the 15th move. Instead he goes this way to F8. blocking that and that on the corners. And that goes back to uh, White has decisive advantage. That goes back to section 1.04 according to Karsten Mueller. And we'll take a look at the main line. Go back to the tenth move. Bishop to d5. Okay, tenth move of the main line. Bishop to d5. King to g7. And here, the main line is to go back this way. If they run, This is if they try to get out. If they go back this way to g5, king to g5, king to e4, king to h5, king to f4. And you can see how white is starting to close in the net.
Now it boxes in that square and White's winning. White has a decisive advantage. Yeah, White's winning because he's getting him down in this corner, this square, which is the same color as the bishop, which is the right corner. Um, black is going to what's called the wrong corner, the one that matches up to the color of the bishop. So we'll set these back. Now, if he goes this other way to run with it, this is what happens. Different this time. Use the bishop to box him in. It doesn't say anything in the notes in Karsten Mueller's book, but my own personal opinion, I think this is a good move for White. This is part of what makes it work. Part of the strategy of blocking off the squares. You'll see here the bishop has this and this, and that becomes a flight square. So this shuts down any escape, because now you've got this and this and this, all sealed by the white pieces. And that's a better move for black because if he gets up here it's going to be easier to box him in with that king. Just like that. I'm going back from the beginning before that branch. And this is the next move after he goes to G7. You bring this up and he goes to here. That's the next move, using your king. Not the knight, but the king. Now you can put him in check. And his move is right here. He says, after king to h5, bishop to f7 check, king to h4, king to f4, king to h3, knight to e3, white wins much more quickly. Yeah, I can see that. Because he can go right here, but that's not going to work because if he tries to fight it, 
you're going to be just like that. And then now he has to go, and then you go like that, and your king's got that, king protects the knight, the knight has that, now he's shoved into a corner. He's boxed in even more. So I hope everybody saw that. Did you get that, everybody? You get all the details on that? Okay. That would be winning. White wins much more quickly, according to Karsten Mueller. We'll take a look at the next part. Okay, we'll go to the next part. From this square, the knight can reach f7 and g6, which is essential to be able to force black's king out of the, quote, wrong corner. And he says here, had he went the other way, had he went like this, just go like that. And white has a decisive advantage, plus on the left, minus on the right. Decisive advantage. White is clearly winning. Says, see the main line of 1.04. That would be section 1, subsection 4. because he can't get out. He goes like that and he's boxed in again. Knight, knight, bishop, bishop. He's done. This actually went to right there. Karsten Mueller's closing notes are, we have reached the starting position of the second phase in parenthesis, it says rotated clockwise by 90 degrees. Finally, one tip for the defender. He should play his moves quickly and head for a corner opposite to the bishop's color if he is driven to the edge of the board. Longest win, 33 moves. And then he gives the reference work cited for the books that he used to um, get the information or part of the information. And that's a wrap on that one. That's a pretty long one, huh? We're going to go ahead and do the next segment on this one. Pandolfini's Endgame Course. One of my all-time favorites. I don't want to do a hatchet job on it and butcher it. So I'm going to go ahead and just 
go right from the beginning the way that Bruce Pandolfini has it laid out and the way that he teaches it or the way that he recommends teaching it and you see what you think. We'll take a look at that one.